it took a while for America to warm up to the seven millimeter cartridges. We already had the 30 out six and the 270. So most Americans figured, why the hell do we need a seven millimeter? Well, things changed when surplus seven millimeter Mauser rifles entered the market in mass after World War II. You know, and Americans realized that the seven by 57 was a pretty sweet shooter with mild recoil and great ballistics. After that, Remington and Winchester started battling it out to make their stake in the seven millimeter market. And that battle continues to this day. You know, there's a large rift in the hunting community over seven millimeter cartridges. Many Americans believe that the seven millimeter rounds are just solutions looking for a problem that doesn't exist. And to a certain extent, this argument's kind of true. In a hunting context, within ethical hunting distances, the seven millimeters don't do what the 30 calibers and the 270 didn't already do. And while you can argue that the seven millimeters offer higher BC bullets, you can also argue that seven millimeter cartridges don't handle the heavier bullets as well as the 30 caliber cartridges do. But this is America and America is all about want and not need. And people want the seven millimeters. The seven millimeters tend to have lower, lower recoil than their 30 caliber equivalents because they're optimized for shooting lighter bullet weights. The seven millimeter is considered by most to be the point where a caliber becomes ethical for animals such as elk, bear, or moose. So there's a lot to like about the seven millimeters. So in this video, I'll review several of the seven millimeter cartridges that I shoot and that I'm pretty familiar with. And I'll compare these cartridges to other cartridges so you can weigh the pros and cons of each seven millimeter cartridge for yourself. The seven millimeter Mauser, also known as the seven by 57 and the 275 Rigby is the first and quite possibly the greatest of all the seven millimeter cartridges. It's been used since 1892 and ammo manufacturers are still trying to reinvent it over a hundred years later. The seven by 57 really gained a reputation in the hunting world after Karamojo Bell killed almost 800 elephants with the cartridge, you know, uh, using carefully placed brain shots. To a modern hand loader, you can get the exact same velocities out of the old 7x57 as you can get out of the newer 7mm rod 8. The 7x57 is very mild in recoil and is pretty easy to load for. So why did other 7mm rounds try to duplicate it? Well, no matter what people try to tell you, there are a couple of issues with the old 7mm Mauser. First of all, the cartridge lies right between a short action and a long action round. This means that the 7x57 in a modern rifle must be chambered in a long action receiver, but it's so much shorter than a standard long action cartridge that modern rifles chambered in 7x57 can feel kind of sloppy with the uh, long bolt travel to chamber such a short cartridge. Also, Sammy specs on the commercial ammo for the 7x57 are loaded very weak. And this is so you don't blow up old vintage military Mausers. So the 7x57 isn't the best option if you plan on shooting commercial ammunition because it's generally so weak.
The 7x64, also known as the 7mm Brennecke, was a very popular European hunting cartridge in the early 20th century. It easily fits in a standard 8mm Mauser action, shoots very flat, and its uh, gently sloping shoulder made it one of the most smoothing feed smoothest feeding rounds ever made. You know, even German sharpshooters preferred this to the standard 8x57 Mauser ammunition. When many European countries banned civilians from owning guns chambered in popular military cartridges, the 7x64 naturally became the most popular option for hunters. It's still a popular cartridge in Europe today, and its modern loadings pretty much match the 280 Remington. Basically, the advantage this has over the 7mm Mauser is that it handles heavier bullets better. The 280 Remington was released in 1957 to compete directly with the 270 Winchester and the venerable old 30 6 You know, it was made to hit harder than the 270 by handling heavier bullets better, but it was also made to best the long-range reach of the 30 6 by using higher BC 7mm bullets. The 280 Remington cartridge fits in a standard long action rifle and feeds just as smooth as its 30 6 parent cartridge. It's almost a ballistic twin of the 7x64 Brennecke, but in a 30 6 case. Today, many of America's top gun experts consider the 280 Remington and its Ackley Improved version to be the best all-around cartridge ever invented. So, why is it the 280 more popular than it is? Well, the 280 never became very popular, honestly, because Remington really screwed it up. When they came out with this cartridge, they wanted it to fit in their auto-loading rifles. So, they initially started loading this round to very low pressures. Then, after the reduced loads got a really bad reputation, Remington kept changing the name of the cartridge to names like the 7mm-06 or the 7mm Express to try to reintroduce it as something else. But, as usual, Remington's marketing failed miserably. And today, we have one of the greatest hunting cartridges that no one knows about. So, how is the 280 fundamentally different than the 7mm Mauser? Well, basically, the 280 is based off a 30 6 case. So, you know, it's got a little bit better powder capacity in it. So, you can achieve a little bit higher velocity. But the true utility of the 280 is it shoots heavier bullets to the same speed as the 7mm Mauser. Basically, you know, the 7mm Mauser hits that magic number of 2,800 feet per second with a 140 or 150 grain 7mm projectile. And the 280 will hit that same, you know, 2,800 feet per second with a 160 or 165 grain projectile. So, you know, this one will hit a little bit harder. But... At the same time, you know, one of the reasons this cartridge didn't take off is that extra couple hundred feet per second velocity you get with the 280 over the 7x57 really gives us a lot more recoil. I mean, trust me, I've shot both and you could feel the recoil difference in them. The 7x57 is a super smooth shooter and the, uh, the 280 Remington and the 280 Remington AI actually, to me, feel like they have the same amount of recoil as a 30 6 shooting 180 grain projectile. So, given that the recoil feels the same between 
the 280 shooting a 160 and the 30 out six shooting a 180. Why not just shoot the 30 out six? So, you know, that's part of the reason for its unpopularity too. The 284 Winchester cartridge was introduced in 1963 to be a true short action seven millimeter round. This round should have been the greatest short action round ever made, but like Winchester did in the mid 60s with a lot of things, they really screwed things up. Winchester wanted their new 284 win to be chambered in their semi-auto rifles. So they made the ammunition specs to very low pressures. Because of this, the round performed much worse than the already popular 270 Winchester. And as a result, nobody really liked the 284. You know, if Winchester would have specced the round out to match 270 pressures, the 284 win would have probably been the best 7mm hunting round ever made. But the management at Winchester screwed this up, you know, just like they did with the Model 70 at the time. Today, except in the hands of a few hand loaders, the 284 win is almost a dead cartridge, you know, which is regretful because it's a good cartridge. You know, it was basically a 7mm-08 Ackley Improved, that came 20 years before its time. The seven millimeter Remington Magnum was introduced in the early 60s to be one of the flagship cartridges of the new Remington 700 line of hunting rifles. It's based off of a long action belted Magnum case to fire a seven millimeter bullet at very high velocities. The seven millimeter Remington Magnum was an instant success out west where flatter shooting rounds were more popular and it pretty much killed the 264 Win Mag almost instantly. When this round came out, Remington was also wise enough to offer reduced recoil rounds so the rifle also became popular with people concerned about too much recoil or too much meat damage at shorter distances. Remington marketed the 7mm Magnum as a do-it-all rifle that everyone needed to have. It was marketed much in the same way that the 6.5 Creedmoor is marketed today. You know, but the marketing worked and the 7mm Remington Magnum became Remington's most popular cartridge and the Model 700 rifle chambered for it became their most popular rifle. From a more practical perspective, it really didn't offer anything at practical hunting distances that the 264 Magnum didn't already offer, you know, with less recoil too. And also, it didn't handle heavier bullets for larger game like the 300 Magnums did. But it proved to be a great flat shooting deer round that was ethically up to the task for elk, moose, and bears. And remember, you know, a lot of people, particularly new hunters, use these Magnum cartridges wrong. These Magnum cartridges aren't made to throw light bullets faster than their non-Magnum counterparts. These Magnum rounds were actually designed to handle the heavier bullets at almost the same velocities that the uh, the standard cartridges shoot the lighter bullets at. You know, so for instance, you know, you get a, a, a 7 millimeter odd 8 shooting a 150 grain projectile at about 2,800 feet per second, you know, this is made to do basically the same thing with a 175 grain projectile. So, you know, it's not all about speed. It's about handling heavier projectiles. Although there were several 
seven millimeter Wildcats floating around since the late fifties. The most popular was the seven millimeter 308. Somewhere around 1980, Remington legitimized the cartridge as the seven millimeter odd eight. The seven millimeter odd eight was an instant hit with hunters, you know, as well as plinkers and competition shooters. By 1980, many hunters were pretty much over the fast magnums and just wanted something with very little recoil, good ballistics at ethical hunting distances, and enough energy to take animals like mule deer and elk. And the 7mm-08 met all of those needs beautifully. The 7mm-08 was everything that the 7x57 and 284 Winchester should have been. You know, the 7mm-08 fits into a standard short action receiver. It easily matches hot loads of 7x57 with, you know, safer chamber pressures. It fits into 308 magazines and it's proven to be the most efficient of all the 7mm rounds. It's also inherently accurate and super easy to load for. And if you want to talk about versatility, I consider the 7mm Rod 8 to probably be the most versatile of all the 7mm rounds for people who hunt at ethical hunting distances. I mean, you can uh, you could shoot the 120 grain projectiles out of these at just over 3,000 feet per second, and they're just deadly medicine for pronghorns or uh, or smaller deer. But, uh, you know, you can move up to the 140 grain bullets with this coming out of the barrel at just over, you know, 28, 28, 50 feet per second. And, you know, you can ethically take an elk with it. So this is a very fine cartridge. You know, and a lot of people ask, why wasn't the 7mm-08 legitimized as a cartridge earlier? Well, it's probably because the 308 basically does the same thing, but handles heavier bullets better. You know, but regardless, the 7mm-08 shoots flatter than the 308, has less recoil, and I have a feeling it's here to stay. The 7mm STW, or Shooting Times Westerner, was legitimized in the late 1990s from Elaine Simpson Wildcat by necking down an 8mm Remington Magnum case. The 7mm STW was created to go a step beyond the 7mm Remington Magnum for a longer distance shooting. Eventually, the 7mm rum replaced it, and then the 28 Nosler was made to replace that. But quite honestly, the STW created a class of cartridges that aren't really practical at ethical hunting distances, which is why none of these cartridges will ever really become that popular. I mean, let's face it, if you're going to get way up there in recoil, with a seven with a small seven millimeter cartridge, I mean you're pretty much better off moving up to the three hundred magnums. The seven millimeter short action ultra mag was created by Remington to compete with the uh, Winchester short magnums, which is basically an attempt by both companies to make short action three hundred and seven millimeter magnum rifles. For some odd reason, uh, companies were trying to convince hunters that they didn't want to cycle ammunition this long out of their rifle. The marketing hype at the turn of the 21st century was to make lightweight magnum mountain rifles. But folks quickly found out that those lightweight magnum mountain rifles really weren't fun to shoot and probably weren't even necessary at all. 
And to top it all off, these short magnums really don't feed that smoothly compared to the uh, standard size magnums. And although some people still use these, the short magnums really faded from popularity fast. Basically, the 7mm short action ultra mag was created to match 7mm Remington Magnum velocities in a short stubby package. You know, it did that, but few people really cared. To conclude this comparison, without trying to be biased, unfortunately, I have to add some of my own very biased judging criteria. I have to judge these cartridges based off of what I consider to be ethical hunting distances. To me, ethical hunting isn't target shooting at game animals from a thousand yards away. To me, ethical hunting is using your hunting skills against an animal's senses and instincts. You know, and in order to do this, I feel that you need to stock within 400 yards or closer. Honestly, even at 400 yards, a deer can't even really see you, and many animals don't even know that they're being shot at at those distances. So in the context of this video, I'm, I'm not judging these bullets based off of, you know, 800 yard performance. I'm looking at the performance in envelope of about uh, 400 yards and in when I'm looking at these cartridges. So using this 400 yards and in hunting criteria and taking in a, into account recoil versus adequate or expected energy, it's definitely between the 7x57 Mauser and the 7mm-08 to me. But to break it down even further, the 7x57 does have a couple of small issues that the 7mm-08 solves. So in the end, in my opinion, the 7mm-08 is the best 7mm hunting round. You know, it's powerful enough to easily and ethically kill an elk with almost no recoil. You know, and inside of 300 yards, it hits just as hard as a 308, shoots flatter, and has less recoil. You know, it's also very efficient and easy to load for. You know, I think the original 7x57 Mauser is a recipe for the perfect 7mm hunting round, but the 7mm-08 put that same performance in a better package, in my opinion. So, truth be told though, I do like the 30 caliber cartridges better than the 7 millimeters. So, I think that makes my 7 millimeter cartridge reviews very unbiased because I have no horse in the race and no favorite. So, I hope you and you know, you like this video and I want to thank you for enduring another one of my videos and I appreciate that. So, thanks for watching. And as always, good hunting.